Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to look at the test database of the new Race Studio 3 analysis software. So to quickly remind ourselves what the test database looks like in Race Studio 2 analysis, which we've all used for years, this is how it looks. We've got some uh, opportunity to uh, filter up here. We've got all of our sessions where we can add in information and a few comments but not as much information as we potentially would like. And so one of the things that the new Race Studio 3 analysis software has is a lot more information. And so to show you that, I'm going to open it up. And this is where we left off of the last tutorial. And so it goes in a stage of um, uh, drill down um, as you go through the view. Uh, and there's some also some similar um, sort functions that exist on other aspects of the Race Studio 3 software as well, which many of us may have used on things like managing tracks, for example. So to start off with, on the top left hand side, after you've imported your data, you'll see um, high level information by date. So here, for example, in 2020, between the 31st of October and the 1st of November at Silverstone National, we can see that there's 18 files. Um, on August 1st at Castle Coombe, there were three. And so this is just a quick view of, of where those files are associated with the date and the track, just for quick reference as to where you are. When you move over to the next side, uh, uh, next um, sort of area of the screen, the sort of the middle part of the screen of the uh, test database, you'll notice that now you can see the sessions. And it's interesting, when you see the sessions, it's captured all that information that you used when you imported the data, where you said the venue type and the driver, um, and the track and that's all available that's up here. If for example on that day you're the only driver and it's only the same car, these will remain blank. It's only um, here in the session um, where it's relevant and you can see if you close that, um, that data stays. Now one of the things is interesting is you may notice on this particular section that there is um, a movie sort of clipboard uh, and a um, data analysis area. This is indicative of the type of data files that you've imported. This is a SmartyCam file and this is a session that's been recorded as part of your logger. Now, depending on the session and where you are, you may have data, you may have SmartyCam data. Sometimes uh, the system um, will be able to connect those two together. And it's one of the areas, I, I will caveat that this is a beta, so these two should be linked, but I've been working with AIM to be able to link these together. If those do link, you'll find a scenario like this where you'll see this icon, which is both the movie and the data file have linked together. Uh, and we'll show later on what that means in terms of the detail. I will also add, I want to say thanks to Matt from Trailbreak Matt. I'll put a link uh, to his information in the description box below, who made some of his data available for the AIM Sports webinars some uh, weeks ago, which have been very useful for us to be able to understand the software in a little bit more detail. And so as you can see here, this session that was uh, at Silverstone National, I have data and video. Whereas if you go all the way back to 2012, I just have data. So that's the middle section. Now there's some buttons on the top, which allow you to be able to sort through some information here. Uh, this one allows you to be able to change the view of what you can see. Plus there's some profile information, which in a later video, we'll talk about what that actually means. Uh, in addition, we have um, you know, uh, the ability to be able to um, change the way um, the uh, data is lined up. Um, we can um, open uh, the, the, the session for analysis. Now, a simple double click will do this and we'll talk about that later on. We can change the session information. We can upload the data directly to AIM, which is why in the last video we talked about having a login because they may want to be able to request your data if you're willing to share you can erase the data and you can upload math channels. Now the math channels are interesting. You actually can't import math channels from Race Studio 2 analysis. And so we'll talk about that in later videos with this particular software. But these are the buttons and this is getting down into the session information. The final area is when we think about, um, so I'm gonna click up here onto the most recent files. And depending on the session that's, that's um, loaded here, we've got a qualifying session on 9.41 uh, and this was a Saturday morning. You can see now we can drill into the particular laps that are there. You can use this sliding scale to say what kind of laps you just want to be able to view in this chart, um, or you can sort it by um, lap, uh, uh, lap number, lap time, and the system is intuitively turning off the first and the last, the out and the in lap, to be able to make sure the analysis um, is more uh, applicable. And you can see now that this will give you that range. Now, we often refer to this in analysis as noise, where there's a big difference between uh, lap times and so this is just a quick visual example of where that is but there's all sorts of inf additional information that's here 
if for example we happen to click up here we'll be able to see this detail just slightly different in terms of a graph per lap time to be able to see if there's consistency or, or inconsistency here we've got a snippet of the channels report bringing in uh, in this instance it's bringing in um, tire pressures um, but at the same time anything you've got set up in your channels report and we'll show you that in a later video some additional features that are pretty cool um, that people will love and we'll get into this in more analysis if you click on map now all of a sudden uh, the key feature that everyone really liked in race studio 2 analysis but was difficult where you had to export your files and then import them into let's say for example a google maps that's done automatically here and you can actually get this into more detail when we look at analysis so stay tuned for that and then some other very cool last buttons that are across the top here. This one, uh, which I think goes back a couple of years, but I'm not sure how much further. We don't have it for 2012, uh, but we do for, for the last few years, is this will show you what the weather was like on that day. So you can see, for example, that um, these little indicators will say when it's raining um, on that particular session and how does that change some of the variables through the day. So a very, very useful feature to be able to understand uh, what's happening on that particular day. The last piece is the advanced information. This just shows you what's being captured. Uh, and in here, um, you can see track, uh, driver, vehicle. This was an Evo 4S with a GPS 08, GS dash memory module. It should have a Smarty Cam here. And this is something that we're working with AIM on right now, which is why we'll caveat this as a beta where these two links files should be linked, but it hasn't. And so we're working on that as a development, which is why I'm glad I've got an account so I can just send it to AIM to have them analyzed. So, that's the quick view well six minute view so a little bit of, uh, you know a bit of lengthy but well worth having a look at some of the features because this page when you see it for the first time i must admit when i saw it i was a bit sort of ooh, that's a lot of information and i'm not sure what to make of it so hopefully you found this video useful please comment box in the box below if you've got any thoughts give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next tutorial